you know. Ooh. There's some Christmas music playing right now. There is Christmas music, yeah. isn't there? Well, guess so, what? It's getting ready to go off. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Santa is dropping it's, off his gifts. Over. Yeah, early. He's early. Yeah, he's early, right? You are now in the zone. zone, zone, the zone. With, With the taste, taste test live. live. Hosted by Damien Lamar and Blue Francois. Hey, what's jazzing? What's jazzing? My name is Damien Lamar. I'm the host of Taste Test on WJCT 89.9 FM. And if you haven't heard of what Taste Test is, Taste Test is... A weekly one hour long music urban mix show hand curated by me. Mm. And uh, the show comes on every Sunday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. And if you miss that show, I just might do a replay on Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Okay. So, um, amen. want to welcome back my good friend and my co host, Blue Francois, Mr. Br- Mr. Francois, welcome. Brother yes, Blue. yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How was your Thanksgiving? That was good, man. I just ate and went to sleep. Okay, we're gonna get more into the eating part later because I I'm, I need to like recount the Thanksgiving now that I'm completely like not like full. Okay, because I was just I think I overate. How do you? Oh, okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, Blue, can you you go tell us uh, take a few moments and catch our listeners up? People that have not heard about what Taste Test Live is, what we do here, update them. Sure. Taste Test Live is your weekly conversational podcast. Each week we discuss the highlights and happenings of the music and entertainment. We also highlight local artists, singers, producers, entrepreneurs, and more right here in our own backyard, Jacksonville, Florida. Awesome. Right on. So, I haven't done a radio show uh, recap, a Sunday night show recap in a while. And before I do that, I want to take a quick moment to introduce our guest of the week. I'm excited about this person. Um, joining us in Studio One tonight is singer, songwriter, producer, and uh, favorite Duval legend, Mr. Patrick Evan. Ooh. Welcome. Wow. Welcome to Taste Test Live. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. You look super chill right now, man. I'm very chill. The only part is called Taste Test, but I couldn't have a taste because I heard you can't be drinking up in here because they're expensive equipment. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I would love to be having a taste. We could do it after. That sounds good. I, I, I'm actually anticipating that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let me, let me guys, for those of you who are listening, let me give you, give you a quick moment and recap who uh, Patrick is. Patrick Evan McMillan, he's a vocal musician, a singer, and a project producer. He's toured several years, um, three years, as a background singer with Mariah Carey at the beginning of her career. That dates back to the early 90s. Um, and currently is based in Jacksonville. He's a lead singer of several bands in the southeastern region, notably Ariel Tribe, whose album Aerialistic is on iTunes, available right now. And other groups include Vibe Element, Coalition, and Karen Marcellus and the Big Bang Theory. Karan. Karan. Thank you for the correction. Karan <laughs> Marcellus. Karan, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. So, um, yeah, it sounds like you got quite a bit of a rap sheet. Yeah. And um, I, that's why you're here. To not be a rapper. To not be I a rapper. Make it quite a rap sheet. <laughs> 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 so, so. You know. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a, quite a journey, brother Damien. Okay. You know. Well, I hope we hopefully you can take us down a few avenues of your journey tonight. Um, if mm. if we, we don't want to take up too much of your time, because I know you're busy and you would probably rather be on stage singing. I was a couple of nights ago. Okay. <laughs> so I'm cool for now. Yeah. All right. So I, you know, Patrick. Most people don't know this, but Patrick has this uncanny ability to like go really, really low and go really, really high. You know, he can get up there, and um, I love the range. Um, so if you can, you like tell us? Do you know your range? And, and, and I don't. And you don't. I don't. In, as far as theory, it's just uh, try like. I grew up listening. My my favorite singer, like I got a bunch of favorite singers, including Damian Lamar. Oh, mm, you are wow. one of my favorite singers, and I've told you this I'm before honored. tonight. You I'm know, still honored. I'm, singer, I find it really I'm hard really, to believe. Yeah, I'm serious. I love your voice. You are, are the closest thing. Like cause my, one of my other favorite singers is Luther Vandross, mm-hmm. and so you have that velvet thing to me. That Luther, that kind of just, just felt like feel like God wrapped your 
wrapped a, a velvet cloak Man, around your, 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 your right throat. <laughs> you know what Chill I'm saying? Alert. No, for real. But my favorite, all time most favorite singer ever is Shaka Khan. Yes, I was. I I was going to get to that. Okay. Because I knew that. Well, we can wait. No, no, I want you to talk about it now. Oh no, that's my girl. We love Shaka. Everybody that's loves that's Shaka. My girl. I don't know who doesn't love Shaka Khan. I, I love him. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's what inspired Shaka Dreams off the album. Absolutely. But that was because of Jared May. Jared May had a dream and he called me up. He said, Pat, I dreamed I was playing in Shaka's band last night. Wow. And he said that uh she called I'm every woman. So he said he just started playing this bass line, but it was not the bass line to I'm Every Woman whatsoever. But um, he said she just kept singing and the band went with it. So he remembered the bass line out of his dream. Oh, my God. That's amazing. No, he remembered the bass line out of his dream. So he. So wait, um, wait, let's playing. go back for my benefit, because I, I didn't catch the first name. Who is this person we're talking about right now? Jared May, my the, bass player, the bass player for and Ariel friend, Tribe. yeah, from Aerial Tribe for seven years. Jared we, we May, were in a, okay. In a band together, and you have met him. You, you yeah, I've seen him several times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He he's he was born white, but he plays like he got so much soul. Okay, are you kidding me? Well, he does me? have so much soul. Though. He does. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's dope. So he remembered this little bass line out of his dream. <laughs> And when he played it for me, I, I wrote a, a tune to it, you know. That's amazing. You know, that reminds me of, uh, I was listening, I too listen to podcasts, and I was listening to a podcast, um, and they were talking about Lenny Kravitz mm. on this podcast because he just dropped a new album out. My first audition ever. Yes. Was with him. Really? I didn't get the gig. Okay. But did you have a chance to meet him? Absolutely. And this is one thing I remember. He was so polite. This is before the Mariah Carey stuff. Yeah. He was so polite. I remember I was singing and there was somebody in his crew that was talking while I was singing and he turned around and told him to shut up. Wow. So I never forgot that. Wow. That's, that's amazing. He was a very, that's very polite, right? <laughs> to tell somebody to shut up. No, he did. He told one. Of, he told somebody that was talking while I was auditioning to shut up. Yeah. So here's what, uh, because we had, there was another voice in the studio, and I would be remiss not to mention him while he's here. Who is this? Can Mr. We, Overstreet Dukas. Overstreet Dukas. Yeah. Hello. We, let's pass it. Pass visual him artist. He's, he's here. He's here for one Amazing for visual artist. He's here for moral support for me. I need some moral support tonight. Yeah. Why would I be? Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. And um, can you do it? Before we take a break, you brought music. So yes. we mentioned Aerial Tribe yes. a couple of times. So what song are we going to play from Aerial Tribe? Right um, Common Ground. All right. Right here on Taste Test, you're listening to Common Ground by Aerial Tribe. Have a taste. Uh. Everybody's searching for peace we Write songs about it We hold signs about it Peace is not something that is so deep And if you release it We find love beneath it There must be a place where we can go Where you're not right and I'm not wrong So come on, can we meet? Can we meet on common ground? Come on, can we meet? Can we meet on common ground? Come on, can we meet? Can we meet on common ground? Nobody's perfect Let's meet on common ground
Welcome back to Taste Test Live. That was exquisite. Thank you so much for bringing that to us. So tell, tell me a little bit about the production. Well, that song came about when uh, bands, being in bands, as you know, Brother Damien, is a trip. So <laughs> I would, I, there was a drummer in Ariel Tribe, Josh Green. Mm-hmm. And he and I were having some band difficulties on the telephone. Right uh-huh. And we were going, <laughs> and I was so tired of having these arguments with all these bands and all these things. It's it just so much, you know. People think being in a band is easy. It's not. Mm-hmm. And um, and so when we hung up the phone after about an hour and a half of this dispute, that song just came to me. It's called Common Ground. Like the hook is saying, "Can we meet? You know, come on, can we meet?" Can we meet on common ground? Yeah. Nobody's perfect, so let's meet on common ground. You know, so that was the whole premise of the song. And it, it, the first verse says, uh, everybody's looking, searching for peace. Everybody's searching for peace. You know, we write songs about it. We hold signs about it. So that song came, that song was written because I was arguing with a band member. Yeah. Wow. yeah and we're I, still I, very good friends, so but that's are. how that song came. Came yeah, to be. It's, I think you know. Sometimes <laughs> you, you have to have the resistance, and um, even you know, and and over Overstreet, feel free to jump in from yeah. an artistic perspective at any time. Overstreet Dukas is here with us in the studio as well, and um, there has to be a level of resistance, um, yeah. a, a little bit of a challenge, yeah. in order to get your best work, yeah, or to get something like. For me, I write when I'm grieving, and I I, I take the the spirit of grief. And I make it positive. Mm. So when you're going through like the hard time, like I'm really, really going through, I'm like really, really sad. I make something extremely different instead of something low frequency. You want to do something high frequency. Mm. So um, have have you done that with some of your other material? Yeah. And the thing is, Brother Blue, <clears throat> Brother Damien, mm-hmm. I had to stop only writing when I was grieving hmm. because it is so easy you write when you're grieving about something of course it is oh, okay yeah so um like there's a song that i wrote called you don't drive me crazy which is one of Overstreet's favorite songs of mine right yeah, mm-hmm. and every top of the verse it says i like i like i like you know yeah i like thinking of romantic situations I like making it up after all our confrontations. So I put, I like, I like, I like. And the song is called You Don't Drive Me Crazy. Rather than writing a, a song that's a love song that's about breaking up. Right. I had to purposefully, on purpose, sit down and write I like. Yeah. So I had to stop um, writing songs, only songs that were about when I was feeling up under the mood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you know what, we can though? get up under the mood, you know. As a friend, and being that is my favorite song uh, by him, <laughs> even though he describes it like that, I visualize the video completely different. Mm, I uh, visualize everything that he's saying. That person does drive him crazy. <laughs> 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 you know, he's, there's a line I like uh, taking long showers. I can see the woman in there, and he's 
freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to produce that video. No, he, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be that would actually be really dope. I, I would no, like seeing that. saying that for a while. Visual now. artist. Yeah. Definitely the visual yeah. artist. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So it can't always be about when you when you're feeling down, you know. Yeah. Okay. So um I'm going to take we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about you in, in a quick second, but I need your help in this next segment. Normally we do a segment called Put This in Your Mouth. And that's when we talk about music news. We talk about what's happening in the entertainment business. Um, you know, who's putting an album out, who's got a new release coming out. We're going to forego that. Okay. And we'll talk about Thanksgiving. Mm. But this year, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of a spiritual person. I and know. I know that on the 16th of November, Mercury went retrograde again. Mm. And the last time it went retrograde, I went to L.A., so okay. there was another shift that occurred, and um, without getting into too many details, um, I ended up creating this past Sunday show as a response to one person, and I've never done that out of 45 shows, hmm. you know, almost been on the radio for almost a year. I've never intentionally set out to create a set list to be the answer Hmm. Or the the response, <laughs> Overstreet, for the for his benefit, we're gonna. It, he reminded me not everybody knows what Mercury retrograde is, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what that is because that happened. It occurred. We're in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. right? We're in the thick of it, right? So Mercury retrograde. My interpret interpretation of Mercury retrograde is that what appears to be happening is if you were looking at the planet Mercury under a telescope, it would appear that the the instead of it going counterclockwise or clockwise it would be going counterclockwise it appears that it's going backwards and it only lasts for approximately 21 days okay so scientifically speaking um our bodies are made of 75 percent water mm. and uh just like the rise in the tides of the fall of the ocean is affected by the, you know the the tide uh, of the moon we are also affected by the planets and what happens in the stars. We're made of stars. We're made of the same oh, matter, the same material, that. right? So, um, according to the farm, far, Farmers Almanac at almanac.com, um, due to the way in our own orbit interacts with those in other planets, they might be sometimes appear traveling backwards through the night sky with respect to zodiac. And it's, in fact, an illusion that we called an apparent retrograde motion several times a year it appears that mercury is going backwards these times particularly attrition traditionally associated with confusion delay and frustration so if you're experiencing that it's simply because mercury is in retrograde um, uh, perhaps mercury retrograde periods can cause plants to go awry however this is an excellent time to reflect on the past and it's said that the intuition is high during these periods it periods and that coincidences can be extraordinary so um, April 2018, I would say March 23rd through April 15th, July 26th through August 19th. So I had gone to L.A. at the end of July, right in the thick of Mercury retrograde. So I was concerned that I was going to have some crazy issues with travel. Ooh, I got married on April 15th. Mm -hmm. You got married on the last day. Exactly. Yes. Tax. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Say it again. Taxes. Taxes. Yeah. 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 So the very last day. So this year it began on or this season. The last time it'll happen in 2018 is November 17th and it will go all the way through December 6th. People have said that you should not break up. You should not start contracts. Don't start agreements. Don't join things. What you should do is reflect. Repeat, reflect, repeat, reflect, repeat, reflect. So you're going to continue doing exactly what you do, but you're going to reflect, 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 reflect. You don't have to go and make any weird changes. You know, that's what you're that's what you do in Mercury retrograde. So, OK, um, it, the planet affects travel, communication, automobiles, signing contracts, like I mentioned. And um, they tell you not to make any direct uh, any any major final decisions until Mercury is out of retrograde. So at that time make the decision and you should be okay. Um, I made a decision to end something right in the middle of Mercury retrograde. And I am feeling the regret in a weird kind of way. I'm feeling the regret of it. So Sunday show salty tears and melancholy was, it was the first time that I've been so pensive. I was so pensive about creating this set list. Um, I, I don't even, 
I don't even know where to begin <laughs> because every song, as I mentioned, was a literal response. Like you, I'm sure you, Patrick, you know, you've created music. You create a song that is a response to something like you, yeah, like you mentioned your song, common ground. Absolutely. It was a response to something that went down and you felt like, Hey, I got to go create this mm-hmm. from an artist's perspective. If something happens politically in, in the world, um, socially, if you're impacted something by happening in your family, Overstreet might you might like create a masterpiece Correct. as a response mm-hmm. to what's going on from your from your perspective through art and and music I believe is the same way. Yeah. Um, so I have the ability to sort of like you know like I said curate these 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 lovely playlists and I just I label them and I started off with. Um, the first song I opened up with was Bad Bad News and I did it merely because of the title. <laughs> Cuz that's what it was. It was just Bad Bad News. Some bad bad news. For the other happened. person or for you? For both of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right okay. before Thanksgiving. Okay. And that's So who got dumped? I didn't say that. Oh, oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Bad Bad News happened. Leon Bridges, uh, it's from his album Good Thing, and I then love I played. Leon Bridges. Yeah, he's good. He, I yeah. think he's completely underrated too. He's well, he's really underrated. I bet his. I bet if he comes to, I bet when he does shows though, you wouldn't think that if you were at one of his shows, you'd right? Be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you people, you're there with his tribe. Then that's why. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up. Yeah, so I, I segue from that song into a song by a group called Van Jess, and they're a Nigerian African American group, mm. um, R and B singers, two beautiful black girls. Their song is called Another Lover. And it reminds you, it's got this 80s vibe. Another Lover. You know, it's got a, a good feel to it. Went right from there to Passion Fruit, which is a Drake cover that was performed by Benny Sings. That was a single he put out. Uh, I then played Kygo and Mike uh, Miguel. Their song, Remind Me to Forget. Listen at the titles here. Um, Frank Ocean from his first album, Channel Orange. I played Thinking About You. Hmm. A tornado came around the room. Excuse the mess we made. It usually doesn't lay here, you know. You mm-hmm. know. But I'm thinking about you. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. I'm thinking about you. And uh, I played Ella May, who's like blazing the charts up right now. Mm. Her song "Booed Up," but I didn't play "Booed Up." I played a song from the Creed Two album, which is the movie. It's on the original soundtrack, and the the song called "Love Me Like That." So again, call response. This is a response. Then I played Sabrina Claudio. Um, her her song was called Confidently Lost. And I felt that way. Sometimes you feel like you confidently lost. One of the lines is, I'm confidently lost. I don't need you to find me. I'm confident. confidently, I'm confidently lost. lost. Okay. I don't need you to find me. Yeah, that's a good place to be. Confidently lost. Right. <laughs> that's a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than being. It's kind of like being lost on purpose. Like let right, me just exactly. let me just go get lost, and I'll I'll find my way eventually. But I'm confidently lost. Right. And or uh, you know the fact that you're satisfied and not knowing. Mm. Or you Ooh. would believe that you will find the truth. Mm. When everybody's trying to tell you, mm. you're like, you don't know either. I am comfortably lost, and wow. I can find my way. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. other person yeah. might not feel like that, right? right? Yeah. But if you are, yeah. that's a good place to be. You're ahead yeah. of the game. It's a lot of people that really don't know but believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but sometimes it's good to just admit, I don't know, I'm lost. That's, yeah. And you that's are a correct. very comfortable place it, to it be. It sure is. You are correct. Yeah, and it's okay because we yeah. all, we we all have been there. All. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would like yeah. for you to, in your time when you have an opportunity, as yeah. a song by Ann Peoples. And it's called Trouble's Heartache. Trouble's Heartache by mm-hmm. Ann Peoples. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I give you a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Go go for it. Why it not? Goes, oh, 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 man, trouble. Mm-mm. Stop knocking at my door. Mm. You used to be a good friend of mine. But you can't come around me no more. That kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Soulful. And, and people's people. is soulful anyway. I know okay, who she is. Troubles, heartache. I think if you listen to the lyrics of that song, I think you would want to add it to your playlist. I, I just might. <laughs> that might be the bonus track, guys. Yeah. Yeah, that would be so the bonus So if you want to hear it, 
that'll be available on 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 the playlist that's on Apple Music and on Spotify. And okay. I'll, I'll also throw the video on the on the YouTube channel as well. So, right yes. On. And then after I played Confidently Lost, I had to because on Sunday, Erica Badu was the recipient of the 2018 Soul Train Music Awards Legend Award. Oh, oh was wow. she really? Congrats. Yes. Big up to 21 her. years of Baduism. You're kidding me. Yes. Street now watch less TV than probably a whole bunch of people. Yeah. So I know he didn't know. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know. So but, there uh, was one song that kind of stood out for, uh, for me because... And I've heard this song hundreds of times because I've listened to it hundreds of times over the years. And this song is called Sometimes. And it's like one of the lines is, sometimes I don't love you anymore. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do. Oh, I know that song. I like that song. Sometimes I'm just going mad. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Yeah, yo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a, it's a dope sample. I mean, that... It's so good. Yeah. That's you know, meanwhile, you're running through my dome. Meanwhile, won't leave me alone. Ooh, child, this love affair. Why aren't you going on? Just go. Can you tell me where? Where did the love go? Mm -hmm. Where did the love go? Beautiful song. Oh, where did mm. the love go? I mean, and that's my response. You know, it's, again, this is a response. Right after that, I think I better let it go. Looks like another uh, love. TKO. <laughs> Brother Teddy. Brother Teddy. Teddy I had to. I had to go back, you know, because a lot of the music's new. And a lot of millennials listen to the show, but you got to give them a little soul. You you know, you don't know what a technical knockout is until you actually been knocked out with love. Mm. You don't know what that is. You can say that again. So uh, right after that, then I played DeAndre, I Don't Need Your Love. I also started off the second set with a song called Down, which came from the, the first EP by Emily King called Seven. And the song is Down. Um, just don't understand. To say, you know, love, love ain't easy. Um, we've come this far, but your love keeps bringing me down, down, down. Mm. Lower than I've ever known before, mm. you know. It's such a uh, emotional um, song. And I was holding on, no tears. And then all of a sudden, I played Winter Song by Leslie Odom Jr., who's one of my favorite vocalists. Okay, Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, was on Hamilton. Uh, the actual uh, stage play. He's also a vocalist. You know, you've probably seen him do Nationwide is on your side. That guy heard it anyway. Heard him, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's Leslie Odom Jr. Okay. His voice to me is like velvet. It's like it's like butter. Yeah. And uh, he he did a song called Winter Song that's actually a remake um, that's normally sang with harmonies, and he sang it as a solo. And um, I was at dinner last night with a few friends, and this, the original song was played, and I love it. I love the original song just as much. But the song is, you know, this is my winter song. It's basically like, you know, it's cold. We're going into winter. The storm's coming through. And, and guess what? You're not in my arms. Hmm. So uh, it was a sappy, sad, sad, so sad show. But people are commenting me to me and telling me, wow, Damien, that was a really good show. I then played another classic by Gladys Knight and the Pips. Neither one of us. Mm. Wants to be the first to say goodbye. Yeah, that's my brother's favorite artist, Gladys yeah. Knight. Man, <laughs> you know my brother. <laughs> yeah, he's been my brother. He's been he's been I to my have. house. He's been to Grand Park. <laughs> I, I met Michael. I have. Yeah. Well, shout out to you, Michael. Yeah, you're listening uh, right now. He will love that. Yeah, this he is a major shout out. Yeah, he's love that. he uh, inspired me. He's a very original human being. Yeah, yeah. really, really original. Absolutely. Yeah. So I we gotta agree. we gotta like do dinner soon. Uh, that that would be fantastic. Yeah. And I close out the show with a new artist by the name of Brick Liam. Um, his Ascension ELP. Um, I I I don't know how I discovered Brick Liam. I don't know. And some one, one night I couldn't sleep because I'm dealing with all these emotions, you know, these salty tears and melancholy. And uh, I watched Brick Liam perform like 30 minute live show before an audience. And I was amazed at this guy's vocal ability. I was amazed at his stage, his stage show, his showmanship, his creativity, the, the, how the vignettes happen in between the live video. I was amazed. Hmm. And I played his song called Higher Can't Lose. All these songs are available um, online. You can search for them all and you can hear them. Um, Specifically, you want to hear them in the order of the playlist. It's kind of like, you know, how people put these albums out and they I'm, I'm from the generation where if you have a, a vinyl record. 
you want to listen to the the record from start to finish. You don't go and pick up the needle and move it to track three and move it to track five and then skip back to track mm-hmm. one. You let it play out and right. then you flip it to the other side, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So when I do the show, it's it's the side A experience and then the side B experience. Side A is a little bit longer, side B is shorter. And I like to end people on a good note. So how I was trying to figure out, okay, I've, everybody's probably crying. I was crying on Winter Song. I'm like boohoo crying. You know, how can I bring people back up and still get my message across? Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's about relationships. It was mm. about grown folks. And I went live on Facebook about five minutes before the show went live and kind of like s- stumbled a little bit in my conversation. Like, hey, really check out the show. It makes, makes me really sensitive. But um, I will never air that show again. I have a question. Yes. When you write a song that is towards an experience like that that you're having, do you sometimes not want to do it live because you're like, absolutely okay to I, this I, day? I get, I get it. So you understand, <laughs> of course. It's so nice to know that somebody like you know. I mean, and and think about like artists that have full <laughs> career, full long careers. They're touring all over the world. They got to get up. Think about Mariah Carey, for instance. Mm. We'll talk about her in a second. But mm. what if she has to get up and sing Love Takes Time every time she performs? Right. She's not there anymore emotionally, right. physically. She's not there, but she's got to get up and she's got to lay it out. Yeah. You're Love right. takes time to heal when you're hurting so much. You know? Yeah, great song. So, um, yeah. I wanted to ask you that. I wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one. <laughs> no, and, and my no, no, band no. members would be like, like Brother Blue, they'll be like, well, listen, I mean, I know that song meant that for you, but we like doing this song, so can we do this, especially Jesse Cruz, my guitar player and friend. Jesse Cruz. Brother yeah. Jesse Cruz, he'll be like, listen, that song, it, it doesn't mean for me what it, how, means what it felt mm. for you when you were writing it. So he said, can we please do it? So he stopped waiting on me. He does it in his show. Wow. He does some of my songs in his show. You know, because he know how I feel like when I think about doing them, I'll be like, uh, Jesse, I don't feel like getting that dark. Right, mm, right. You know yeah, saying? I don't want to go there so tonight. He's like, yeah. I don't feel like that when I hear it, though. So I say, okay, go ahead. And, of course, he pulls me back in. So when we work together, I'll do it, do mm-hmm. too. But I just wanted to ask you that to see if it was just, if that was yeah, an uncommon it's, thing. It's, no, it's, it's quite common. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to quote Badu because I love her so much. Yeah, she's um, cool. She, I'm an artist, and I'm sensitive about my... Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, yeah. The thing you can't so, say on the radio. The thing I can't say on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I've done two paintings by Badu, actually. I've yeah. seen one. Two of them. Pull, pull the microphone a little closer to you. Yeah, I've done two uh, of Badu. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, That's recently... Over Street, the cost talking. Um, recently, I thought about another one based on the Baduism album. Yes. Um, I think it's uh, Certainly... Oh yeah, she says the most amazing line. But with the question, ever. who gave you permission to rearrange me? Mm. Certainly, certainly not, not me. me. Mm. Not me. Mm-hmm. Okay. But my favorite line <laughs> is this: "The world is mine." When I, when wake, I up. wake up, I don't need nobody telling me the time. Man, mm. <laughs> period. <laughs> I There's have the nothing vision. else to say oh after that. Oh my God! The church hands I are going in here now. I have the vision of her like in a dark, yep. in a you room. You know the church hands. She's probably in a bed somewhere, and she's carrying a lantern. Yeah. But the lantern is probably like the sun, or mm-hmm. black male, or you know something like representing the sun in time. And she's getting up. Mm. Yeah. And don't bother me. That's it. I don't need nobody yeah. telling me the time. Nobody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, certainly not yeah. me. <laughs> I got to do that one. <laughs> yeah, you have to. I can't wait to see what that looks like, man. That mm-hmm. that's gonna be, that's gonna be fierce. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying because I love Erica I do. I, she knows I love her. She she knows, she knows it. She knows it. Shaka knows I love yeah. her too. I'm 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 really like <laughs> one degree close to Erica because her background singer Teron Austin. He and I have the same birthday. That's my birthday twin. <laughs> and we chat on WhatsApp all the time. Oh, like, oh, I can I can text him right now and he would hit me back right now. Mm. My man Teron, shout out to Teron Austin in, in Brooklyn, New York. Right on. Yeah, that's my not my Aquarian, my soul Aquarian brother. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I saw recently that there was someone that you had communicated with for years and y'all just uh, met in person. You, in, we'll in have we, we're gonna get we'll we'll have that'll be another story for another day. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, that, right on. I will definitely tell you about that because um, 
2017, 2018 was years of reconnecting with people from my past. Okay. People that have, I felt that made an impact. Um, I even reconnected with my first real love, this girl named Rachel. This year? This year. And, um, yeah. Gosh, I mean, I'm trying to get sappy. But, yeah, I, I found her, and I ended up emailing her, and she responded and communicated and told me that she was married and you know she's got a I think a step child two step kids and a child of her own and I think she's running her own business and she made it quite clear in the email that I'm in no position to rekindle an emotional relationship or you know a physical relationship with you don't I don't want to set the the tone for that I just wanted to know after 20 years mm. how the hell has she been like where have you been I've always the same wanted to thing know. Just happened with me. Yeah, exact. Exactly. Like exactly. I don't even have to add to this because the exact same story you're telling just happened to me, and my brethren here will tell you. That so this let me is let true. me ask you a question, Patrick. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Did you? Because for me, I did not respond because I I wasn't hurt, but I think that was a closure that I had been waiting for for 20 years. I didn't respond, but I got sick afterwards hmm. because I did not respond. Hmm. It all stayed here. For you, how did that? Did you respond when you? after that yeah man because i had to find out what was happening i was like dang I, and, you, and the number you just said 20 years i'm like i haven't seen you in like 20 years yeah she actually had her daughter contact me on facebook you do what i'm saying yeah and i've been telling brother oh and um a few people in my life my brother michael and a few people i've been saying it's so funny a bunch of things from my past have been coming back to me just like what, like you and I are whatever this retrograde thing is, like we, we're going through this together. <laughs> yeah. he, I'm telling you, he is my <laughs> witness. Okay, I always yeah. need one. I yeah. told him. I, I've been telling my friend, my friends, and my family, there are things that have been coming back to me. Even recently, my cousin, who is a big time background singer, Cindy Mizell, right? Yeah, you've talked about Cindy okay. before. Yeah, she. I have a message on my phone right now where she left me a message two weeks ago and she was like, Pat, she said, I'm I'm at my parents' house, or both her parents are, are gone now mm -hmm. as, as of recent. And she said, I'm looking, uh, I'm just wandering around the house. Wandering. She said, and I found these two albums. But she said, I thought they were mine. They're platinum albums. She said, I thought they were mine, but they're yours. She oh. said, they got your name on them. So these are the two platinum albums that I received personally from Mariah Carey that I never thought I'd see again in my complete life. It's like a picture, Brother Blue. And, uh, Brother I Damien. am literally sitting here with my mouth open. I am not kidding you. He knows what I'm saying is true, Brother Overstreet. It's, she just sent, sent me a message. I thought, you know how you see a picture of yourself from 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. Something you got this, this jacket on, you'd be like, where's that jacket at? Right. That was a bad jacket. Where's that? Golly, I wish I knew where that jacket was. And you don't, I thought those albums were gone forever. They were at my family's house in New Jersey, and my cousin just found them and called and told me. So I am going to be having my two platinum albums that Mariah Carey gave me personally have them shipped back to me absolutely so what you're talking about bro you don't even understand what you're saying like you're telling your story but you're telling my story at the same exact time it, i promise I it wasn't serious. intentional that's crazy it couldn't have been because you don't know what i'm going through no. you know what no. i'm saying no. so this is the universe you know me and you always have these crazy talk yeah. bro yeah you know it so okay <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned Mariah Carey. Obviously, for those of you who do not know Patrick Evan, Patrick Evan, as I mentioned, sang background. Was it how many years did you sing background from Mariah specifically? It, it, three through three. I recorded on three CDs and through three tours. Wow. Yeah. For three, three full years. tours. So you've been all over the world with her. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. And you and Trey Lorenz at and the time. Trey, who, who me and him were friends before we ever knew her. Wow, we were already singing together. It, it, it wound up being so. Like, you guys were like a duo, like a, a pick. They no, picked. there was one more, Gino Morris. Okay, who was the son of Mercury Morris, who played for the Miami Dolphins. Nice. Mm. Okay, so we were already friends in New York, and we were singing together. We used to, they used to come to my job at the video store, and we would be putting on music tapes, and we'd be at, while I'm working, we practice it to stuff with Luther Vandross and and yeah. and uh, Talking Heads and Anita Baker. We'd be sitting there. Uh, 
practice in the background. Yeah. And then I'd get off from work, and then we would go to Gino's house, and we would continue this. Mm -hmm. This had was going on before we knew Mariah Carey was alive. Wow. And it so happened I got on the gig first, and then a few months down the road, you know, for, I, I'm not sure what the circumstances were that the guy that brought me on wasn't there anymore. I, I'm not clear about the circumstances, but he wasn't. And so I said, hey, my buddy Trey. Yeah. Trey he, got he on. He can sing. Yep. Trey can sing. And she had met him already because when I first did my first session with her off of her first album, I took Trey, just like Brother O with me, he is here with me right now. I took Trey to the session. Mm -hmm. but he wasn't working on the session. I was, but she met him and we were singing and stuff. She, we was always singing all the time. So, she, so she remembered him when I told her I wanted to bring him aboard. Yeah. So Trey got on and then we needed a third person a few months later, our friend Gino. So it was like a bunch of us friends yeah. that were already singing together wound up getting on this tour mm -hmm. <laughs> and getting paid to travel the world singing with this girl. But we were just doing, we were doing what we before we knew she was alive. Like yeah. I say, you know, yeah. we, we were already doing yeah. it. I already knew I was going to be the bottom. Gino was going to be the middle. Trey was going to be the top. We already even knew where we were going to be. I remember looking at, like, Arsenio Hall. Yeah. I, I remember seeing you. I didn't even know you then. Yeah. But when I think about the feeling that Mariah Carey brought to the stage mm. when she came, mm. and she was always still. She didn't move around a lot. No, mm -mm. there was a very Just few her times. hands. Her hands, were, <laughs> her hands would be going. She definitely did the hands, right, and she, you know, right. she she co she cover that ear up occasionally. Sometimes oh, yeah. she had to hit that real that oh, real yeah. high note. Absolutely. But she didn't. She didn't. She didn't like walk back and forth. There's nah. very few performances you see her walking back and forth on the stage, trying to prime the audience. Right. She primed the audience with her voice. You are correct. So, do you still keep in contact with her? Her, I haven't talked to in over. 10 years maybe Ten years. like 15 okay trey and i are still in touch still yeah like, what is he doing anything musically hey i sing in background for mariah carey almost 30 years later still he still <laughs> sings background for her yep okay so did kelly price get she got started with mariah carey did when during the music box yeah. album right yeah well that was through my uh doing as well because i had seen Kelly and them sang at my cousin Cindy Mizell's wedding. Now I'm falling out my chair. Hold on. Okay. Fall, 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 fall. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So when we okay. got ready to do uh, <laughs> the, the MTV Unplugged, uh, Mariah's manager, Randy Hoffman, he said, listen, we're going to add some more singers for this. I said, I got them. Because I had just seen Kelly and, and, um, and these are brilliant singers singing at my cousin's wedding a few months ago. So that's how Kelly. That's got the on Kelly board. Price. The Kelly. I got pictures of me and her at home during these times, you know, and um, wow. just singing, singing, singing. Girl, her, her sister, Melanie Daniels, just singing. Just yeah, just <laughs> stupidly. <laughs> yeah, just singing <laughs> stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> just like right here, just like how we are. Yeah, right. You know, just hanging out, singing. just singing. Yeah. You know? <sighs> So, yeah, so they they even got pulled in, you know, because I wound up being Mariah's contractor. Yeah. Um, there was another brother, Billy T. Scott, that c got me on the gig. He's passed on now, rest his soul. But then I became the contractor. And so mm. that's how Trey got on and how Gino got on and how Kelly and them got pulled in because I was hired. So, so is it true? I Like, I read somewhere that you also did work with Brian McKnight mm -hmm. and also Michael Bolton. Is that uh -huh. right? Yes. One time, one show, both. Okay, that that's that that's all. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah, one show. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, Michael Bolton, I remember that was at Madison Square Garden in um, New York City, mm -hmm. and it was uh, we. I didn't even meet him. You, he was just there. Yeah, like we we rehearsed for yeah. the show, uh -huh. and then when he came on stage, you know. It was like you, I was in a thing. choir. Yeah, yeah. I was, there was a choir, the song called Pride, Love and Tenderness or something like that. And so they had like a choir, so I got hired within the choir. Okay. So we just did one or two songs, and um, so I never even met him. Um, Brian McKnight, I actually did get to meet, uh, and I was like, dang, I was like, you singing like this at rehearsal? Like, ooh. Like, what you going to do later, you know? <laughs> I remember him saying, he was like, oh, I ain't even really singing. So I was like, is that ego? <laughs> like, you go, are you really coming in later and doing much more? Because you are, like, 
flooring me at this rehearsal. Yeah. So you yeah. really come in there later and go do more than this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's how confident he was. Yeah. He's like, oh, he said, man, I ain't really singing right now. Said, okay. So, you know, so, and, um, and, and working with, um, you know, people like, uh, the producers from CNC Music Factory and stuff and doing recording sessions with them. And mm -hmm. that Mariah Carey thing opened a bunch of doors. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of doors. I, I was able to get called for a bunch of things because of her name. And you, you were based primarily in New York City, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was living in New Jersey, but it was always like, it's like going from downtown to Regency. Yeah. You okay. know, like I could walk out of my apartment and see New York, yeah. the skyline. Like mm -hmm. I always wanted to live right near New York, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know. So yeah. uh, who's Donovan Frankenreader? Frankenreader. Frankenreader. Right. He is somebody that had some success in the music industry. Okay. Right. And then um, some Jacksonville, he's from California. I mean, when I say he has some success, I mean, he's been like on the Tonight Show and stuff like this. But his band was from Jacksonville. Wow. You know, so when he was in St. Augustine recording, you know, these band members that I had worked with already for years, they were like, hey, Pat, want to come do a session for this guy? You know, I'm like, is it paying? <laughs> they said, yeah, I said, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and he was cool, you know. He was keep very it, keep cool. it at 100. <laughs> yeah, he was a very hippie type guy, jam music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know how far he went. I didn't follow follow his career. You know, but I know they toured, and then Jared May, my bass player from Aerial Tribe, wound up on tour with him as well. So, what what brought you to Jacksonville after you did the the long stint with um, you know a lot of the greats in New York City? What brought you to Jacksonville? Well, I moved to Atlanta first. Okay, had a wonderful year there, very spiritual year. Wonderful church, Hillside International Truth Center, Dr. Barbara King, and she got me writing in my journal and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She would put the church on experiments. So had that wonderful experience for a year. A friend, Jamie Bailey, who I don't know if you're familiar with Black House. You oh, probably yeah, are, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I figured Brother Blue would, would yeah, know Black yeah, House. Yeah. That's okay. how I met you. Okay. Oh, that was like almost what was 15, 20. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, wow. no, for real. More yeah. than that. <laughs> but Jamie, who and I had been in a group together. That's right. And we were in a group with someone who is very famous now, which is uh, Michael K. Williams, the mm -hmm, actor. Mm -hmm. So Michael K. Williams and I were friends in New York. This is when Michael was dancing for different artists. He wasn't even, um, he wasn't acting at that time. He was dancing for like Crystal Waters and, you know, you know, I can't think of all these people, but you know, all these little house, house, uh, you know, entertainers, people were doing house music at that CNC time. CNC music, yeah, like three times. Not, not CNC, but, um, you know, I, I wish I could snack. think of all these people's <laughs> names. But anyway, he, yeah. you know, there's a lot of house snap. music going yeah. on. Yeah. I got, I the got power. power. During that yeah, time, but not stuff. them. Yeah, okay. You know, Madonna, he, he danced with in videos. Okay. Missy Elliott. Okay, these kinds of things. So, but, but he's famous now. He is a famous actor. He is Omar from The, the Wire. Wire. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. is Chalky White from uh, you Board know Walk Boardwalk Empires. Empire. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I'm a big fan. Uh huh. And I can too. see that. Yeah. So he um so yeah. me and Mike Michael K Williams and Jamie from Jacksonville we were writing songs and Jamie would drive up to New York and and Michael and I would be writing the songs and Jamie would be doing the track. So that was the association. Eventually, when I was in Atlanta, Jamie called me. He wanted me to come home. So he, is that is that Jacksonville? That's just here. Okay. And he says, I have an independent label, and I want you to come. He said, I'm doing stuff. I'll make sure you're making some money, singing backgrounds, doing vocal lessons, and this kind of thing. And he kept his word, you know, and that's why I'm home. Eventually, I left Black House and started doing bands and stuff. You know, that, that, was, that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to be in Rufus. Of course. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so when did Aerial Tribe start then? Um, Aerial Tribe started in like 2000, uh, maybe 2000. Four? Maybe, no. 2000, cause, yeah. Because by 2003, we had already gotten an award for Best yeah. Band in Jacksonville from the Folio. Yeah, so, Folio, yeah. So we had already been together like maybe three years before that. So we probably started in 2000. And uh, and one of my favorite projects, um, 
a shout out to Bat Sauce and Lady Daisy. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to. Um, my, <laughs> one of my favorite projects is um, Spoonie. Yeah, man. Spoonie, me yeah. too. That's when I me fell too. in love with the vocals of Patrick Evan. That's his favorite. That's Overstreet's favorite. My project. favorite song on that is How to Make a Rainbow. That's his mm. favorite song from that album, too. That's, see, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're here. You know, that's that's it right, that's there. It right there. Yeah, yeah. You guys, I mean, yeah, let me tell Brent you, now. I'm gonna I'm I'm put you on Front Street for one second. Patrick Evan is so old school. He brought some authentic, <laughs> real deal CDs in here in the <laughs> studio tonight. <laughs> Yes, he did. I didn't know what it was supposed to look, be. I, look, I, I don't, I don't shoot down CDs because I have them, and I, I have this constant debate with myself on whether I should get rid of them. Right. Because I have them digitally as well. No, exactly. But once you get rid of them, it's like you don't, you don't have that tangible. It's the, no, you, you know. Don't. Okay. Growing up, tell me if you had the same feeling Uh-oh. when you get that vinyl record. You go to the record store and you get that vinyl. You head back home, put it on the record player. And you read the album artwork. You read the liner notes. If it was a, a good vinyl, it had the the, the trifold, the flip, you know, with uh-huh. open this way and that way. Yeah, like and the you had all players, the lyrics. Yes, Earth, Wind, and Fire. How you old open. are you? That's my, another my, show. Great great that, yeah, that, that's, that's a whole great, show. I have no problem telling everybody great my age. Oh. In, in in about two months, mm-hmm. huh? I will be forty three years old. Get okay. out of here. All right. Well, yeah, I just turned 43, um, what, a few couple days, of days ago? ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Happy belated birthday. We had a good birthday party. So that was <laughs> Where was my invite, that was though? For me to, uh, no, they just threw it for me. I just threw yeah. it. And trust me, it was one of those years I actually made it. So <laughs> Because a lot of I'm serious, we have pictures from two two past years of his birthday where we're all taking a selfie and he's not in the picture. So we just celebrate without him. He'll go home and just in his honor wind up going to sleep or something. Yeah, but we're there. <laughs> we said we're celebrating over Tree's birthday party again without him. But he made it this year. I'm so proud of you. Aren't you glad? <laughs> um, yeah, I asked year. about the birthday because I was thinking about the vinyl and yeah. um, I guess it's not really an age thing. It's probably a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when I came to the United States, I realistically the only thing I can remember is tell the people where we're from. Came to the United States. Oh, from, uh, from Haiti. Okay, Haiti. Age of Haiti. six. Um, so I remember eight tracks. Oh yes. yeah, I do too. Right, yeah. not because we played them, but I remembered we had a car, and I remember looking at an H. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I didn't even know it went in a car. Yeah. So I think we skipped it's the like whole a cartridge. vinyl. Uh-huh. Uh Because we're from Haiti, we I assume we probably just listened to a ra- uh, from what I remember at least uh, the local radio station on radio. Okay. So I didn't know nothing about no vinyl. Came yeah. to the United States and it was eight tracks. Mm. <laughs> so, but, and I didn't even know anything about eight tracks either because then mm. uh, it was going towards cassettes. That's true. Right. That's true. So yeah. we used to send cassettes in Haiti while we were living in Haiti to my father mm-hmm. in the United States. Yeah. Well, see, even with even with cassettes, mm-hmm. and I can't say this about eight track because eight tracks they didn't give you that much room to print on the mm-hmm. on the on the label. Uh-uh. But the but but a cassette you would usually have the. The, the notes, the vinyl notes, they would be really tiny. Yeah. But it was something about, like, something you don't get nowadays in music. You don't get a chance to unwrap and peel back the plastic and sit and dive into the, the lyrics. Experience. The right. experience of actually a tangible product is right. what, I'm, what I'm getting at. So I, I love and appreciate the fact that you took out time to actually bring tangibility. Oh, yeah. Right here. I could have like brought it. some cassettes, too. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> I just a, bought a cassette player. From an artist perspective, I guess a visual artist perspective, you're missing out on the imagery. Absolutely, right? absolutely. You're right. Maybe, Some buy maybe albums based on images. Yeah, alone, you are alone. correct. Completely agree. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. So maybe something, um, and I think sometimes it's really important. I was I was watching uh, an interview with a gentleman talking about how to release music digitally. And, and do it the right way because mm. there's so many people that are creating music and they just throw it out without even making sure it's copyrighted making sure they have the publishing rights to it right. make, you know, make sure they do all the dirty legwork that's so important that Ugh. most artists don't want to be dealing with they just like they me. just want yeah you an artist you just want to sing <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely, you don't want to be dealing with all the minutiae <laughs> i just don't but I'm, I'm i'm a weird kind of person i'm that person but also i like i like getting in the weeds because I, I like the self-control aspect of things 
You know, okay. I need to be That's able to great. know that my stuff is registered with ASCAP. I got don't okay. play with I'm my that money. Far. I am that okay. far. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I'm sure you probably go look yourself up too, just to see. I don't. Oh, you don't. See, I'm not that far. <laughs> But I have my ASCAP cards. Okay. There you go. I do. I have those. That's I, it. And I made sure that the whole band of Aerial Tribe had them, too. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Aerial, Aerial, Aerial Tribe, we mentioned them several times, and I know you, you said roughly 22,000 or so you guys formed. How did that come about? Oh, because you're like in a band, and then you quit that band, and then you get another band, and you quit that band. And then I was like, so, so I went from an original band on Vibe Element, and then I was in a band called Colorblind. It was a cover Colorblind. band. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then when I wanted to, they didn't want to do none of my originals. I, I, like, in other words, I, like, they were not, and I get it, you know, musicians, don't, they're not trying to help you start your old band. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So they had been coming supporting Vibe Element and stuff, but then I started Colorblind, and I still wanted to do some original songs from um, Vibe Element. And I didn't feel them you know, get trying to do that. Yeah. So, it's like that sometimes. I, I feel the same way. I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As the songwriter, I'm just like, Ugh. but I get it. So because that was happening, I stopped that band after a year and I started by um, Aerial Tribe so that we could continue. I could continue doing originals. Yeah. Music. Okay. Not just the vibe, like not just vibe element rich songs with Ariel Tribe, but I wanted us to write new songs. I didn't get that from the band before that. that they wanted to participate in that. They just wanted <laughs> to do covers, get the girls, pay the money. Yeah, in that order. I get it. In that, in that <laughs> order. But, but it was just cool. It was fine. But, you know, they don't write songs yeah, with those, those cats in that band. So I yeah. guess they didn't. They didn't have the same. So I'm gonna talk band. about. I'm gonna talk about you for a second. You might. I might make you feel uncomfortable. Uh-oh. I'm. A, I'm gonna pretend I'm Wendy Williams. No I'm kidding. Oh I'm my not. god. Because how know, you doing? Right. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I know that you. You're very much like me. You're a sensitive artist. You sensitive. Obviously, we. You sitting here telling my story, and you don't know my story. Right. Yeah. About the whole retrograde and it's time. And yeah, it, well, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's why we're here sitting down talking. It's time, man. It, it was time. So my first real interaction with you, and I had, to me, you were a celebrity. Like, you were real. You were always authentic. You were always, like, had, you know, shook hands and, was, you know, every time I saw you out about, you just brought the show. People love you. you let me tell you. I'm glad. They they do. Trust me, you have a major following right here in Duval. And what you've been doing here is to be commended because you I think you're the longest running male vocalist ever. <laughs> Pres- <laughs> present company included. Okay. Well no, you're smart enough to do both. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, you know, but but at the same time, so so one <laughs> I, night, one I would night, advise your life, not mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> because you're a great singer and a great songwriter, but you always make sure that you have something backing you, like my mom. You was trying to tell me, yeah, yeah, but I didn't listen. I wanted. I, to I had to you know. because I like nice things. I do, and I just do, and. You know, anyway, enough about me. <laughs> um, this one particular time, I um, I showed up. I think you were at the garage had just. Opened. Oh my God! You go to Richard that story, yeah, I brother. Have to. Garage. Because no, I, I, the reason yeah! I, I have right to. The yes. So, <laughs> but this is a true. Story. This is a true story, and this, this is, is my this story. is my account. I'm actually it. glad. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell you. Come on. About, let's go. This is a Wendy Williams moment. This is a Wendy Williams moment. Oh my God! But I'm gonna set believe. it up. I'm gonna set it up for you. <laughs> oh Listen to this. Let's talk about the power of forgiveness. Oh, I wouldn't be here if that love. power wasn't there. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. So what had happened was, mm-hmm. I and then had, I get to tell my side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So my the way my version <laughs> the way <laughs> way my version. <laughs> now I want to hear yours first. Okay. So my version was, mm-hmm. I. Um, was I was at the at the time I had my own business and I would do music on the side. It wasn't like all the time, and I wasn't in a band, but I wasn't quite quite okay with just being a solo artist. But I had picked up this New Year's Eve gig that I absolutely had to do. It was paying me very very well, mm-hmm. and 
I could not get anybody because it was last minute. The contract was signed the last minute. They got insurance last minute. Like everything just happened last minute. Everybody else, all the musicians were completely booked for mm-hmm. New Year's yeah, Eve. Like pretty, they're mm-hmm. done. Like yeah, you're some right. guys, it's already November. They're already booked <laughs> you are for New correct. Year's Eve. Here I'm looking for somebody to try to play with on New Year's I Eve. I remember that. And you were performing with Bert Minji that night at, at at Garage, and you were doing an acoustic set. Bert was playing guitar. You laid it out, and Bert approached me and he says, "Hey." I know you were doing this gig. I, I need to go over a few songs with you for this gig. You know, Patrick's outside. Let's just go over real, real quick. So I'm like, okay, cool. I come in and everybody's outside. So it was just me mm-hmm. and him at right. first. I and I'm starting that. to sing and people starting to come in like, oh, there's another singer? Yeah, because you sound great. And my <laughs> eyes were closed. I wasn't even, I was singing I my song. In. I think I was singing It's All Right, I Have You, one of my original songs. Okay. And while I'm singing... While I am uttering the words to my song, Patrick comes on my left ear and he comes behind me. He's like, if you don't do not ever do this ever again, this make this your last song right now. (laughs) And I'm still singing, (laughs) still having to execute. Oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, oh, my God. So instantly I was like, I was crushed. Oh I was crushed. God. I'm bringing this up because I'm talking about the power of love and the power of forgiveness. I'm it's it's you, huge. Brother. I'm with you. <laughs> so me, I'm not gonna like. Okay, I know because I and I told Patrick this when I finally because you were I think you were outside oh. having a cigarette. Go outside. I walk up to you. I, I said, need one right now. I know you don't. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna blow. I'm gonna blow you one right now. Here we go. And I, I walk outside and I say, I say, Patrick, listen. It's not it's not anything like I promise you I wasn't trying to take your gig. This is what I said to him. Right. Mm-hmm. And I said, I know I'm because I, you know, I learned this in customer service. I know, you know, it's called feel felt. <laughs> I know how you feel. I felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right. The, and it's true. But I, I know as a as a performer, the, the microphone, the stage, your mic, your mic. Is your mic. Mm. I don't share my mic with anybody. That's my mic. I spit on my mic. If I want to put it in my mouth, if I want to put it down my pants, whatever I want to do, mm. it's my microphone. Yeah. If somebody else is, comes in, they grab my mic and they sing with my mic. Now they left the germs on there. They left the spit. And you got my have a booger hanging down on the microphone. Mm. You just never know. Trust me. I done been there. So I understood that part. But I'm like, listen, I, I, I didn't do this on my own. He asked me. And he and he made it seem like it was his gig, not yours. That was the most that was, you know, so that's my version of the story. We have since this was so oh, many years please. ago. This we have way since past. way. Look, we've sat down. We broke bread. We absolutely. Sat, you know, but yeah, we, we kind of hung, you know, for a while. No, and absolutely that was friend. we let bygones be bygones. We wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. Absolutely. If I can't bring up that particular story. Story you just told is correct. Yeah. Now, how Um, When people come in, this is how I came into the field of it, Mm -hmm. you know, because the people that I came in working in Jacksonville with were all jazz musicians. Right. You know, studying at UNF and doing jazz. So, you know, there's this thing where you come and you sit in and you do two songs. And then you say, you throw a kiss and you're walking off the stage, right? Yeah. Okay, you did two songs and then you did like another song and you did like another song. So then I was like... (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I'm going to myself. I like singing too, you know. <laughs> so, and, and what people don't know, and this is the God's honest truth, mm-hmm. I love having people sit in, and and people know this. And I always, it's not a singer coming up yeah. in my gig, and I'm not going to be like, do you want to say, sing a song? If it, whether or not they say no or but, not, but but to be asked. Is different than just arbitrarily, and so I felt like, like, like what I guess my 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 story was like I felt like I was asked because he was like I wouldn't have been rehearsing there. I didn't come there to rehearse. It wasn't your fault. It was Bert's fault. Yeah, we still love Bert. I love Bert. But guess what? I haven't played with Bert ever since. He don't live here no more. Well, he played. I no, I saw again. him. I, saw I know him. he was he at, was this, at uh, festival. At, I saw yeah, pictures of yeah. YouTube something. Wayne no. Woodstock. He was playing for Mama Blue. He played at Wayne Woodstock. Yes, see, that's I what I saw. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't come I this year. I shook his hand. It I was good to see year. him. Everything. Yeah. This is the only yeah. thing Bert should have done. Bert, brother Bert, should have said to me, Pat. Um, me and brother Damien are doing a show on New Year's, 
and I would like it, you know, because I'm hiring Bert. Right. For the, Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he should have said, Brother P, uh, me and um, Damien are doing a New Year's show. We kind of want to have like a, a rehearsal here. But he didn't tell me that. No, so, he didn't. So he didn't. that was the problem. The issue wasn't even you. After, As a matter of fact, I felt horrible after I found out yeah. because I love hearing you say Mm-hmm. Then and now, <laughs> and we, and we talked about this. Then I just wanted because we have friends in the room right now. I wanted them to understand. I am so I forgive, and I appreciate it. You know, because forgiveness goes. Uh, it covers the, the Bible says forgiveness covers, covers a, a multitude, multitude of sin. sin. Mm. Christian so, boys in him. You know, I mean, Amen. so <laughs> right. <laughs> so you know, and I don't think I don't think we would be sitting where we are if if there was no forgiveness. If, if I didn't appreciate your artistry and how I I was able to understand that whole situation was, you know what, Damien, you have to put yourself in his shoes. What if somebody did that to you? You know, what if somebody walked up and I'm on break and I could see somebody at this, I would be in my feelings too to this day. I'm like, I know this joke ain't appearing on my microphone. Oh, I you know, that's what I would be saying. You know? songs. I'm talking about at that time. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm current now. Sure. But at that time, if it had just been like two songs, I didn't care. I didn't know that you guys were running through the rehearsal. Yeah. If he had told me that, I would have been like, oh, great. I can keep drinking and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I would have been standing at the door yeah. listening to you because you are one of my favorite singers. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, that is, this is amazing that yeah. you brought this up because I actually thought about this as you I was did? coming to the show. God is that what made you nervous? Because you told me you were nervous. I was a little nervous. Why? Maybe that me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I told you, you that. Truth. It's always nervous. You're you're an artist, and you artists get real nervous when they talk about themselves too. I some, so some appreciate this conversation. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I mean, we've had it more in depth than we even had then. Mm -hmm. So this is awesome. I've grown a lot. It. I've grown a lot yeah. uh, as a person since then. Um, and I look back, and I just I'm like, yeah. I, if I put myself in your in your shoes, I would have done the same thing. Maybe not. I would have waited until I finished my song, though. I wouldn't have did it. My oh, song. God. <laughs> the pettiness. I know. By the way, that is also unacceptable in the visual arts. Yeah. Because it I is. have a friend who I, I don't know why you have to tell certain things to certain people. Mm -hmm. It seems like it would be common sense. Wow. Right? It seems. Seems right? like. Yeah. Uh, but in my world, yeah, I have a friend that would act, uh, used to actually. There's an art show opening going on, and this idiot <laughs> used to come in the show carrying a painting. <laughs> you know, walking during in the, the opening. show during the opening with a painting in his hand, like it ain't nothing, right? Uh -huh. And you're laughing because you know it can only I be know one who person. You're talking about. Wow. Yeah, we ain't finna say no names because well, we good got friend respect. Of ours too, but, but you I know, know who we know some about. crazy people. Wow. That's yeah, that's a little tactless yeah, or tacky. Yeah. yeah. So if you're hearing this right now, yeah, it's tacky. Don't do that no more. Look, yeah. unless, which is most unlikely, that you're going to be some Basquiat in the future that we did not <laughs> foresee, <laughs> don't do that kind of stuff. No, exactly. <laughs> we'll apologize later if that's the case, but for right. now, don't do Just that. Don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. That's not proper form. Don't. No, mm. Don't do it. Yeah. So, so, brother Bird, if you hear this, this was your fault. <laughs> and good, I love you still, and I love Brother Damien still. So we we're gonna wrap this up, but I I do want to get to because the question everybody is like, please ask him, please ask him, when is his album coming out? When is Patrick Evan gonna have a full length LP? It's right here. It's called Soul Power. Soul Power. Absolutely. No. This is not Aerial Tribe. This no, is right. Not that's just one. No. Element. Everybody that's knows. The what, that's no. This is the current one. Current the one. Current. Oh, yeah. Now, current means when was that released? When did that come out? I don't know. It was a couple of years ago. Okay. Five, Guess what? Six, okay. Five, yeah, we were talking about Guess what? That was five five good. You that know we in 2018. Era. You know people like want music. Like you drop up a song this month. Oh, you know next month they want it. Okay, you still No, me and, as a matter of fact, I just wrote a song and recorded it. Um, over uh, Mo Ricks, uh, you know oh, Mo Ricks. Yeah, yeah. Know yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's doing tracks now as well as engineering. Oh, I can see that. That'd I'm be, pretty okay. curious about what you were getting ready to ask me. Though, yeah, I was going to ask you a question. Do, do we have time? Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, you know they closed down Martini Mondays. Did you know that the little spot? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, out of all the venues that you performed at, like you know who who offered the best amenities? Because you know you was at Freebird, Easy, uh, Indo XO. You had Mon- Martini Mondays. You Easy. had uh, the little spot in Riverside. I can't think of the name. Um, uh, uh, Starlight. 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 Oh man, oh, yeah. I used to yeah. love playing. Yeah, I used to just tear that down. Yeah. No, it was. You ever cool. played a few? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was Man, we'd be driving places at the beach, and, and it, 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 I'd just be like, I played there. I yeah, played a there. few. Shim Sham Room. There. Yeah, yeah. Fernandina, St. Augustine. Like, it's been 20 years. Like, last year was my 20th year anniversary. Of wow. Playing That's Jazz. what I told you. You are, you are an R&B yeah. legend right here in Jacksonville, man. It's an honor Wait, to sit before when you. When you say 20 years, are you talking about your cumulative with Mariah, or are you talking uh-uh. about as a solo Mariah, artist? Mariah, that's longer. Or are you talking about as a yeah. solo? As a solo artist, oh, as a, or as a lead singer. singer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Where I was making my living singing lead in bands. Solely. Yeah. Favorite venue? Solely. Yeah. Solely. 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 Favorite venue? Easy. Everybody that hears this will, will be saying it before me. The Voodoo Lounge. Oh, of course. Easy. <laughs> I know that, and I wasn't even around. Oh, my God. I mean, y'all used to set the tone. It was like... Us and Brother Therapy. You remember Therapy. Love Jones? Peyton, yes. Peyton Love. It was kind of like that without the poetry. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I okay. do know what you're saying. Like, you, everybody come there. It was like, okay to be drunk. It's okay to, like, fraternize. Nice. You know, everybody was chilling. Yeah, everybody. And, and I think I was, I think I had just turned 18. I snuck, yeah. You were sneaking in, brother. Yeah, I just turned 18. Because it, it, it didn't, it, it didn't, yeah, it was, it was very. Brother Blue was sneaking into the Yeah, because I was 18. Because I'm 37 now. So, yeah, that was a long time. Okay. And you, and at that time, Black House was on. Black on House was, yeah, was on the other side. Mm. And, man, I don't even know why they. Ugh. They had a green room for us, three levels up. If you felt like walking. Yeah. If you felt like walking. It was no elevator. <laughs> so you have to go three floors up. Uh, and they had bodyguards to make sure that nobody could come up yeah. with us. We, we actually got to take a break. And um, there was black people, white people. I mean, dread, y'all played everything. Gay people. Great people, yeah. West Side, North Side, Hood. Everybody was in this building, yeah. and yeah. everybody was getting along. Yeah, yeah that's what I was everybody. Am I wrong, brother? So Blue? what happened with the Voodoo Lounge? What happened? Management, ownership, yeah, yeah it property. Was something, yeah, it was something with with the with that part. Yeah, nothing to do with us, mm. you know. But I'm gonna tell you, and let me tell you something. If, if, in closing, yes, when these. If something went went down in the voodoo, like some guy maybe grabbed some girl's butt and didn't want her butt grabbed, or or there were some guys like maybe getting ready to get into a little tussle, which was rare. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Rare. Let me tell you something. Everybody's energy prote- protected. So has Sunday, which is where Karan Marcellus came in. By the way, yeah, okay, he was so the promoter yeah. of this night. Karan Marcella, wow. big shout out. He was also the guy that was the head of the Big Band Theory, which is uh, the first band I recorded with when I got here. But I was not the lead. He was the lead. It was based on hip hop. But it was a 14-piece band with horns, background yeah, singers, I which remember. I was one of. And, you know, but Karan was the lead, mm-hmm. you know. But let me tell you something. When something went down in that club, the, pe- the the bodyguards would be getting them out of there so fast. Quick. It, yeah, it was almost like everybody was like clutching the pearls. Like we couldn't believe. Like they come into the voodoo with this kind of foolishness. Like yeah. we couldn't even believe it. You know, yeah, it they was must not know we don't do that. Yeah, here. yeah, that's right. how it felt, brother uh, Damien. It was <laughs> yeah, like they yeah. must so not know so that chill. we do not do this here, and this place would be packed. So chill, brother uh, Peyton Locke would be in the back spinning hip hop, oh, wow, wow, and wow, we wow. would be up front singing alternative and original magical and nights. A magical night. So I just wanted to give that shout out to the Voodoo. The, the, you know, it w- it was it was protected by the energy of the community. We, yeah, we, we, yeah, people, you ha- you got to go yeah. and don't come back. Yeah, that's good. We yeah, need a place like that fantastic. again here. Yeah, no, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. if you're listening, get on it. Yeah, if you're listening, get on it get like on that. It. Yeah, like now. <laughs> well, did really? you, uh, you went to the Voodoo? Also? I I don't recall ever going to the Voodoo Lounge. No, no, no. Okay, um, the, you probably was in the church at the time because no, this is very yeah maybe a sinful environment. <laughs> <laughs> was this was this pre 1997? 
Mm-mm. Uh-uh. No. no it, was like, it, it was like 2000, 2003. 99, oh, 2000. No. Yeah, yeah, 2000. So I was always on gigs then. I was okay. gigging with Even Still a lot. Okay. Like yeah. it, it, two and three gigs a weekend. Because I had just you know? met Steven. Yeah. Because um, yeah. he Steven was, y'all would do Fuel every now and then. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, so 2001. Yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. I know it's around that area because we got nominated. Uh, we already oh, won Best Band uh, by the community. Yeah. Uh, and Folio gives you a, a, a gift, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, so that was in 2003. So I know that, and we had been together at least two years before that. So I think I believe we became, we came together, to, uh, Ariel, Ariel Tribe, around 2001. Yeah. And we were together for seven years. Yeah, yeah. And we still play together. I, I just did a gig with the guitar player, Jesse Crew, two, Saturday. <laughs> and when Jared comes to town from L.A., which he's traveling all over the place, playing bass oh, for different wow. people out in L.A., I knew it was going to happen. Um, every year, once a year, he comes to town, and then we have a reunion mm. at different places. So, you mm-hmm. know, but so Ariel Tribe is still... Yeah, it's still it's still, still a bouncing. Thing. Yeah. You know so what what's then? next for you? Uh... Try not to. <laughs> it's trying to stay sane, because as we all know, sitting here, life is just a trip on its own. It is. Just like just just to be a human. Yeah. Now add being an artist <laughs> in that. Oh, that explains what I'm going through right now. Okay. <laughs> now we got some other kind of vague chaos. Yeah. <laughs> you take yeah. what I'm and, and then Mercury is doing his thing. And Mercury in retrograde. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So um, um, what's, what's, what's happening for me is to continue to write. Like, see, I write, as Overstreet c- can attest, outside of just writing songs. If you come to Cork Art District one day and come to uh, the lab where Overstreet and Sean Thurstow and uh, Jeff Lukey and Zach. and Zach Freeman have a yeah. studio, but there's a wall in there, so they all share this one studio. Man, you come in there, we we all we write on the wall, you know, thought. And plus, I have like a whole treasure chest full of journals, you know, that hmm. I've been writing since since I was in Atlanta. Yeah. And they continue. I got journals with me in this building right now because you don't never know what's coming. Mm-hmm. So, but no, we write on the wall, the whole wall, like as big as that window where um, Autumn is, is the whole wall, it's longer than that. Wow. You know, and it's all these thoughts. Overstreet will write something. I'm writing something. Zach's writing something. You know, so the writing doesn't stop. It never stops because it's not just about writing songs. It's no. just about writing thoughts. Yeah. Experience, life experiences. Yeah. You, you create them. Yeah. Absolutely. So in closing, what's next for me to continue yeah. writing, uh, continue writing songs, to continue recording, which I am doing. Mm-hmm. And, uh... That, that's what's up. So I have a present to tell you about. Uh, this happened uh, on Black Friday. Okay. I recorded some music. Actually, I was part of a recording session, um, the creation of a song that I've been working on for eight years, the same song. I have about five different versions of the same song. Mm. So I'm sure if, as an artist, you mm. got versions of the same mm-hmm. theme, the same concept. The concept is called Love is a Temple. Your voice belongs on the track. You want me to come sing the background? Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. You, you gonna sing with me though? Hell yeah. Come on. You're gonna record right in my home studio. And yes, I said hell. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me look at you, right? And, Blur. and you're closer to now. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm in River I don't live in Riverside anymore. Yeah. But um I'm over I work here every day, so you know. Perfect. And uh, yes, the answer is yes. Soon, like uh, within the month of December. Okay, you got. Because I'm man. trying to drop this EP in February. You got. Man. That's gonna be a classic. Yeah, it's I can't it's wait. gonna be really good because I've already made a promise that I was not gonna put another track out unless it's worthy to be praised. Okay, right on, you know, brother. You know what I'm saying yes. So let's let's do it. So we're going into we 2019. Now. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Uh-huh. Thank As you. opposed to hello. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank so, you so much for hey, having me here. Man, it's a, a pleasure. Thank a you pleasure. so much, Brother Damien Lamar. Thank you so much, much Brother Blue Francois. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Overstreet Ducasse, for being here with me. Yo. Thank you, Autumn, for your presence. Yeah. Yes. And I'm just glad to have been able to do it's this. It's a pleasure to have you. I really appreciate you taking out your time because um, you could be, like I said, singing somewhere. 
tonight. I'd and rather be here right now. Wow. And I, I love singing, but Powerful. I would prefer to be here right now. That, that, that moves me. Thank and you. it is the truth. Thank you. Um, so, Blue, can you give us a, a, some, a few last-minute notes? If you like what you heard today, please follow us on social media at Taste Test Radio on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a website, www.tastetest.live. There you can find all of our old episodes featuring some past guests. Taste Test Live is also a fully syndicated podcast. And our and we are on all platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and more. That's right. That's right. And as I always say week after week, if you really, really like what you heard, do us a humongous favor. Write us a review. Give us five stars. We appreciate that. That is our show. Um, this podcast was produced, edited, and recorded courtesy of yours truly. And this episode of Taste Test Live is, has been sponsored in part by our friends at WJCT, a nonprofit organization and the leader in public broadcasting right here in Northeast Florida. In order to keep great music programs and shows on WJCT 89.9 FM, kindly consider becoming a supporting member and making a donation or pledge. If you're looking to do that, more information can be found at wjct.org slash radio. And um, that is it for us this week. Again, our guest, thanks so much for Mr. Patrick Evan, Mr. Overstreet Ducas, who's coming back in February to talk about nothing but art yes. and your journeys and your migration to the United States. I can't wait to speak with yes. you. Oh, God, so, that's that's great. great. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to it. So, um, so, yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you ever get over these things? You know, like, do you...